Hello, this little video is going to go through the expression of proteins from a bacterial pet vector. Um, we created another video earlier that talked about how to do subcloning, but what we're going to do now is to talk about how we use the genes that we've subcloned into our vector to produce a protein. Now the vector that we're going to use is a pet vector. We are going to be using a T7 promoter. Now the T7 promoter has come from a bacteriophage, and a bacteriophage is a virus that infects bacterial cells. It's normally denoted on our plasmid vectors with the T7, and here we've got a little arrow that points the direction in which it's going. Just as a recap of the other type of features you'd find on a vector, we often find we have the LACZ gene. Now we're going to talk about the LACZ gene again in a moment, but what we use the LACZ gene for is to turn our bacterial cells blue if the gene is absent. If the gene is inserted into our vector at the multiple cloning site, shown here in orange, it will break the LACZ gene up and prevent it from operating and breaking down and turning our cells blue. So it's a way of selecting to see whether or not our gene has been subcloned into our vector. Now the multiple cloning site is shown up here at the top and it's a collection of sites for type 2 restriction enzymes. Type 2 restriction enzymes break open our bacterial vector and allow us to ligate in our DNA insert. We also have on here an F1 origin of replication that we can use to create single-stranded DNA. We have an ampicillin resistance gene that we can use to select only those bacterial cells that have taken up our plasmid. And we have an origin of replication. In this case, it's a low copy number origin of replication, and that will maintain the plasmid within the cytosol of our bacterial cell. So in subcloning, we cut open our vector using restriction enzymes, in this case restriction enzymes A and B. We cut our cDNA with the same restriction enzymes, or compatible ones, in this case A and B. And then we use DNA ligase to ligate the two together, giving us our vector with our gene of interest inserted into it, shown in red. Now once it's in, we need to get that gene expressed. To do that, we're going to use a version of the LAC operator. Now the LOC operator is one of the first genes that was fully characterized. We have the LAC inhibitor that creates the LAC repressor protein. This repressor protein binds to the operator and prevents the promoter from transcribing the genes downstream. In this case, LACZ, LACY and LACA. When this repressor is bound to the LAC operator, these genes cannot be expressed. In the presence of lactose, however, this repressor drops off and the genes and the promoter can be activated and any gene downstream can be turned on. Now, it's a little bit more complicated than that. If glucose is present, the repressor will stay on. If you really want to go up and read more on the LAC operator, I'll put a link in the description to this video. So, once the repressor drops off the LAC operator, shown here, anything downstream of the promoter will be transcribed. What we do with these vectors is we use a type of E. coli cell which has in it a gene construct denoted DE3. The DE3 construct is promoter for the LAC inducer which produces the LAC repressor which will bind to the LAC operator. Now in this instance the downstream genes have been replaced by the T7 RNA polymerase. Notice the T7. T7 is the bacterial phage RNA polymerase. This enzyme is going to recognize the T7 promoter and produce mRNA from it. Now when we're working with this promoter, we use an inducer which is an analog of lactose called IPTG. IPTG binds to the LAC repressor and causes it to drop off the LAC operator. So IPTG is an inducer. It is structurally similar to lactose, but this sulfur atom creates a chemical bond which is non-hydrolyzable by the cell and so causes the lac repressor to drop off permanently. In this instance, anything then downstream will be transcribed and translated, and that will be the T7 RNA polymerase. This construct is called the DE3 cassette, and you'll find it inside the genome of our 
producing cells, our bacterial expression cells. So what do we have? We're going to have a strain of E. coli. That strain of E. coli will contain the DE3 cassette, which has on it the relax repressor bound to the LAC operator. Downstream of that is the RNA polymerase. We'll let our cells grow. When they reach a given point, we will put in the inducer. The inducer causes the LAC repressor to drop off the operator. Once that's dropped off, the promoter here can start producing RNA T7 RNA polymerase. That polymerase will recognize the T7 promoter. The only place we're going to have the T7 promoter within these cells is on the vector that we have transformed into the bacterial cells. So that RNA polymerase will then bind to the T7 promoter. The only place we find that T7 promoter is on the PET vector. That will then cause the production of mRNA and the expression of our protein. If you look again at our PET vector here, you'll see that the T7 promoter is located here and is straddled either side by lock operators. So there are two locations to which that repressor can bind. In this way, we have control over the production of proteins within our bacterial cells.